Going. He's on the taxiway. Here, Cammy, go around. In the go around, I count 759. On July 7th, 2017, an Air Canada flight carrying 135 passengers and 5 crew takes off from Toronto Pearson International Airport at 6.58pm. Delayed due to weather, the crew is 30 minutes behind schedule. Other than that, the flight is to be routine but for a patch of thunderstorms at about 945 At 11.30 and 42 seconds, the flight crew checks in with the North California Terminal Radar Approach Controller. The controller directs them to the TR Dow Waypoint and orders them to join the FMS Bridge Visual Approach Route to runway 28 right. 16 minutes later, the crew acknowledges visual of the airport and are subsequently handed off to the San Francisco Traffic Control Tower. Landing clearance is granted to the flight at 11.51 and 7 seconds, and the gear is lowered. Four minutes later, the flight crew contact the tower. And uh, tower, just want to confirm, uh, it's Air Canada 759, uh, we see some lights on the uh, runway there, across the runway, can you confirm a clear to land? The tower confirms they are cleared to land. Air Canada 759, confirm, clear to land, runway 2A right, there is no one on 2A right, flight you. Okay, Air Canada 759. In the go around, I count 759. Looks like we're lined up there. Uh, flight heading 280, climb the 3000. Heading 280, 3000, count 759. Uh, United One, Air Canada flew directly over us. Yeah, I saw that, guys. 759, contact North Cal 135.1. We'll catch you in a couple minutes. It would have been the modern day Tenerife. Over 1,000 passengers were aboard the five aircraft involved. NTSB chairman Jim Hall called it the most significant near miss of the decade. So how, in the age of aviation safety, did such a simple error go unnoticed until there were seconds to spare? San Francisco International Airport has a dual runway configuration. Two adjacent runways, 28 left and 28 right. The typical view for pilots approaching 28 right was this. However, on the day of the incident, SFO was undergoing maintenance work on 28 left, adjacent to the intended runway of 28 right. This meant that the runway lights were turned off. As night fell, the distinction between the closed runway and the active runway diminished, and the pilots mistook 28 right as 28 left, and taxiway Charlie as 28 right. This meant that as the plane came onto its final approach, the captain lined the plane up with the taxiway, thinking it was 28 right. That still doesn't explain why it took so long for the pilots of Air Canada 759 to realise their mistake. It's extremely hard to mistake the blue and green lights of Taxiway Charlie for the distinct yellow and red markings of Runway 28 right. This can be seen in this video of a jet making a similar approach to Air Canada 759. Notice the thin green streak on the taxiway and the blue lights leading off the runway. 
The investigation into the incident uncovered that the first officer had not rested for 12 hours, and the captain for 19 hours. Under US pilot fatigue rules, they would not have been permitted to fly. Amazingly, the near miss was not considered reportable under FAA guidelines, and so the cockpit voice recorder was overwritten as the aircraft made three more flights before the incident was reported. This data could have helped clarify the crew's failure to recognise the threat. As a result, SFO nighttime landing procedures were modified to forbid visual approaches when an adjacent runway is closed, and to require two air traffic controllers to help spot possible conflicts. Air Canada 759 would have been a case of regulation being written in blood. Thankfully, the keen eye of the aircraft on the ground, including a Philippines A340 who turned on their taxi lights to alert the Canadian pilots, helped avert an indescribable disaster.